Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zach Mueller and today I'm going to be talking about Hugging Face Accelerate, how we've sort of addressed the challenge that is making device agnostic and sort of compute agnostic uh, frameworks out of a machine learning library to help democratize uh, AI on a large scale. Now, who am I? Uh, I'm, a, I'm the technical lead for the Accelerate project at Hugging Face. I'm also one of the core maintainers of the Transformers Trainer. And then I'm also just a humongous API design geek. Don't get me started on conversations like that. We'll be here for an hour. So uh, what exactly is Accelerate? It's a number of solutions wrapped into one box. So we have a training framework, an inference framework, and above all of that is sort of a command line interface that wraps everything together. Now, when I say a training framework, uh, this is built on PyTorch. And the general idea here is take a raw PyTorch training loop, don't give you a trainer, don't give you a big wrapper, instead have you change a few lines of code and unlock distributing your code to any compute provider, any compute platform on top of any device as well, and you gain device and hardware uh, agnostic capabilities. Along with that, because we don't have a full trainer and instead focus on being low code, it's very flexible in what it can do and there's very minimal magic. So you can dig through our source code and it's fairly easy to understand. And the main goal with it is give you guys the power to do whatever your custom training loop does, but let us handle the intricacies of how do I get my code to work instead of on a CUDA device, on a MacBook, or how do I make my code work on deep speed so that way I can scale it up to 1,000 GPUs from just my simple little local machine that I have going right now. Now, what I mean by this is currently we have six supported backends. That's your CPU, your GPU, your TPU, and then XPU, NPU, and MLU. These are some new hardwares and compilers that have come out in the last few years. Uh, along with this, again, using the same idea of giving you a code agnostic approach, uh, we support FP16, BF16, and FP8, including the new FP8 compilers out of Transformers Engine or MSAMP and soon Nanotron uh, to help sort of train at a more quantized level fully without needing something like PEFT uh, fully. Uh, automatic grading accumulation, because fun fact, it's very easy to have inefficient grading accumulation when you start scaling up trainings, and that can be very costly. Uh, we added support for quantization through bits and bytes. Uh, along with this, you can use pretty much any experiment tracker that you so choose without having to worry about how does weights and biases interact with multiple GPUs? Do I need to care about anything like that? We handle that for you so that you don't have to. And then on top of that, we make it fairly trivial for you to then take your same code, write a configuration to say, all right, this worked on multi-GPU, let's now scale this up and use it with fully sharded data parallelism. You don't have to change your code, you just simply change a simple YAML configuration if you want. Now, uh, sort of more on this idea of low code, we started having issues in the Hugging Face Trainer of maintaining distributed code efficiently because everyone requires certain little tweaks. You need to do this thing for TPUs. You need to do this thing for multi-GPU. And so as a result, we sort of took all of that, shoved it into Accelerate, but we needed to make sure that it was easy to use. And so through changing essentially four different lines of code, you can take any normal PyTorch training script, and now you can use it device agnostic, compute agnostic, and have it fully customizable to whatever you're doing. You can see here, basically, we t uh, create an accelerator, uh, change our device, change our optimizer, uh, and change our backward pass, which I'll go into a little bit more detail shortly. So first, we create an accelerator. Accelerator is basically the central hub for everything we're doing. It handles all the weird black magic stuff that you don't need to worry about, like when do I set my optimizer? How do things work on different processes if I'm doing distributed compute? This is sort of the central core. Uh, and after you've made that, you call what is uh, essentially called accelerator.prepare. It knows based on whatever compute you're working with, oh, we're using distributed data parallelism, we'll wrap the model in DDP. Oh, we're doing uh, across six different nodes for training, then we'll make sure the data loader is optimized for doing uh, training on six different nodes so you're not repeating the data, which can be costly or time consuming. And on top of that, any sort of tweaks that need to happen to like the scheduler and the optimizer also happen in this step. And then lastly, in the core example, 
All you tweak is the backward pass going from your loss.backward. You just call accelerator.backward instead, uh, because as you try more and more complex training regiments like Megatron or DeepSpeed, they have their own fun ways of doing the backward pass. We want to make sure that you don't have to worry about that. Now, I talked about training for a little bit, but what about inference? Accelerate is not just for training, and instead what we've helped uh, to do is take the GPU poor where you're running on a 2060 Ti at home and let you be able to run big models like Stable Diffusion locally. Uh, and now it's sort of at a point where we can take humongous models like the Llama 7 or the Llama 8 billion, the Llama 70 billion, and soon we're now going to have even more fun problems of with Llama's 405 billion coming out, the Nemotron that just came out, of, which I believe is like 340 billion parameters, and figure out how to make sure that you don't have to have a humongous cluster to run inference on that. It might be slower, but give you something that can work at home. Now, how this works is uh, last year or so, PyTorch came out with this idea of let's have the meta device. The meta device has no weights. It's simply a skeleton that uh, takes up a super tiny footprint and basically says, we know the rough sizes of how our model is going to fit into memory. And what uh, we then took with that is, okay, we're gonna introduce something called device map equals auto. As we input a layer, as we, as we take an input and shove it into the model, each layer is moved on and off of the GPU or whatever accelerator you are using. And so as a result, we don't need, say, 16 gigs to run Llama 8 billion. You can run it on a single card. And instead, what we're doing is taking those weights, shoving it to the GPU, back onto the RAM over and over and over again. So it'll be a little slower, but generally we found that that doesn't matter at the end of the day when it comes to running these things locally. People are using VS Code with plugins using Accelerate to just sit there and have their own LLM do the code generation for them instead of needing to use something like GPT-40 or using Copilot. Now, when we talk about sort of the command line interface as well, Running things in distributed fashions is very annoying, and so we've come up with two solutions for that, Accelerate Config and Accelerate Launch. The first is sort of configuring your system to understand how we're running things, and the second is how you launch them. As I mentioned before, launching in a distributed fashion is very annoying. You have Python, which will just run it on a single GPU, or it will do what is called model parallelism. Then you have Torch Run, which is PyTorch's answer to that of spawning up a distributed process. But now if you're using DeepSpeed, DeepSpeed says to use DeepSpeed with a different parameter to run on two GPUs. How can we make this better? The answer is one simple command, accelerate launch, that will work with everyone. It has the same parameters, nothing is different. And instead, you just specify, I want to use deep speed for this and pass deep speed arguments or configure that in your config YAML, then we'll handle all of that complexity for you. I mentioned before, config YAMLs, rather than needing to remember 16 different arguments, or if you're, say, trying to recreate how someone trained using the same compute, you can just borrow their YAML. And this allows us to have various definitions of how your compute environment works. So like over here on the left, we're specifying multi-GPU on eight machines training in uh, BF16. And on the right, we have the same number of machines. However, now we're training in FSDP. And there's a lot of basic examples, and we're working on a model zoo to have even more of very bare-bones training configurations that work for a variety of models. Uh, however, all of these are thoroughly explained in our docs, and all you have to do is borrow one of these configs, essentially, and understand that, hey, I can run Llama 8B uh, full fine-tuning on my two 4090s, and I just have to hit go and pass it my custom data. So that's the general idea behind Accelerate, and honestly, the ideas that existed two and a half years ago when the library was first being introduced. So what's new? It's been a very busy year in the ML community, far more than I think even two years ago. We've had new ideas like quantization, humongous models being released by Meta, by NVIDIA, and how do we make sure that that can be accessed by everyone without needing to hide it in a humongous abstraction like the trainer? 
We've had quantization that's absolutely taken the field by storm, came out a year or two ago, and now suddenly everyone is realizing, hey, we can now train using these quantized methods, methods using things like LoRa or QLoRa or QDora, and now we can train 70 billion parameter models on 24090s. Might be a little slow, but you can do that at home, and it doesn't cost you a humongous cloud compute bill. New precision backends, as we're learning more and more how to take these sort of quantization methods and apply them on bare metal. So these would be like the FP8 backends from Transformers Engine, from MSAMP, which is out of Microsoft, and out of Nanotron, which is by us. And then on top of that, we're figuring out more and more, okay, we know that we can run this compute, but now we're having a scaling issue where the GPUs are no longer the slowest part. It's how do we load the data fast enough? How do we move the models fast enough? How do we optimize the CPU downtime so that way our models can keep training as fast as possible? Uh, along with this, we're seeing far more compilers come out and new backends as people want to try and take on the beast that is NVIDIA. So we've had XPU and NPU, which have come out of Intel in the last year or two, as well as MLU, which is newer out of CamberCon. Uh, these are all brand new compilers that basically operate in a patching mechanism. So you just import torch.npu and it will go ahead and swap everything to use NPU. We do that automatically, so you never have to worry about that. On top of that, we sort of found that while people liked having the accelerator that did this whole lower-ish level abstraction towards training, they wanted even more fine-grained control. I want to only log something on, say, my second GPU. And so we ripped out the core of the accelerator and shoved it into something called the partial state. And the partial state is there to basically help you navigate these distributed environments and this distributed training while also making sure that the same code can still be ran on whatever device you're using, be that single GPU, multi-GPU, a Slurm cluster, what have you. So for instance, uh, a few basic uh, functions I'm showing here is like, so we have on main process, which basically says we're only gonna run that on a single compute, which of course, if you're running on a single GPU, that just prints it. Or we have uh, with partial state main process first, this is especially handy whenever you're doing something like processing data sets, because I don't know about you, I would rather tokenize my data set once instead of having to tokenize my data set 10 times for 10 GPUs. That will take far too long. And then the bulk of what handles the extraction of the device and knowing because everyone's got their own fancy terminology rather than saying like two CUDA, you have like two XPU and whatnot. We just say, okay, just use the device. And if you don't want to use the accelerator, that's fine. That can get you 90% of what you want to do. And we make sure that we have that readily available for you because Accelerate is designed to have different abstraction levels depending on what you need. You could never need the accelerator at all, especially if you're doing inference. The partial state dot device might be all you need. However, uh, as we're getting into these bigger and bigger models, we were noticing that we're going to have a huge problem on our hands with distributed compute because for a while, uh, our big model inference API only worked on a single node. Uh, PyTorch came out with this new library called Pippi. And Pippi is a Torch native pipeline parallelism technique. And what pipeline parallelism essentially says is if we have four GPUs, rather than, say, taking the input from the first GPU to the second, to the third, to the fourth, and congrats, I've done my inference. That's really slow. Wouldn't you rather have all of your GPUs running at all times to do inference? And so that's what pipeline parallelism achieves. When the first uh, input goes after the first GPU, then we load a second one onto the first GPU, and we scale that up further and further, which allows us to prepare a lot more... Uh, a lot bigger batches through our GPUs and make sure that we're always running because uh, any stale GPUs when you're running a big inference uh, is not really reasonable. Uh, and this is especially going to be important as we're dealing with things like the 405 billion parameter model coming out of Meta here sometime soon. Because my rough idea of what that will probably need is two local hard drive, two local drives, because 405 billion parameters, that's nearly a terabyte on just your disk. So 
trying to figure out how we can scale that down for the GPU poor is going to be sort of an exciting challenge over the next few months. Uh, but we're going to try our best to make sure that the GPU poor aren't left too far in the dust. Uh, and you can see that it's, it's not quite the device map equals auto that uh, previously, if you've used transformers with the pipeline you've seen, it takes a bit more setting up with instead doing this prepare pippy. Uh, we're hoping that we can merge this in so that way it's the same agnostic API you've used with transformers, you've used with pipeline, uh, and we'll see how close we can wind up getting to that. Now, I've sort of talked about the library as a whole, uh, but I haven't talked too much about the adoption because no one really hears about what happens at the lower level. You hear about the bigger integrations like transformers, fast AI. Uh, and what that allows us to see is just how far the community has taken Accelerate and really what different backends wind up using it. So for instance, we use this internally. Nearly all of our projects run off of Accelerate. That includes diffusers, that includes uh, transformers, uh, pretty much the LLM leaderboard. It's very rare that we start a project that doesn't have Accelerate unless it's for good reason. On top of that, we've had new frameworks like Axolotl that have come out of the woodwork, really helping uh, on the democratiza democratization field uh, for machine learning. Uh, Fast.ai has been using Accelerate for nearly the last two years. Uh, LucidRains is a very popular ML re-implementation of papers uh, given from private companies that don't feel like sharing their code. Nearly all of his projects winds up using hugging our Accelerate on the back end. And then lastly, Corneo runs all of their training off of Accelerate. And Accelerate wasn't nearly as pretty back in the day. This was in 2021, and it was a nice fancy way for us to take our multi-GPU code and our TPU code and run it in one go. We didn't have FSDP support. We didn't have deep speed support. FP8 wasn't even a thing back then. And now we're at a point where all of Hugging Face is basically running on Accelerate. We support any precision that is natively supported in PyTorch at this point, and even the experimental ones. We support any distributed training you want, be that deep speed, FSDP, Megatron. And it's really blown up into this sort of high level of adoption that we weren't quite prepared for because no one really thinks a low level library that tries to remove the magic would really be popular per se because it's low level it's unique they're special they're trying to do something turns out a lot of people actually like that and so this wide level of adoption has really helped uh for lack of a better word accelerate how fast we're trying to adopt new ideas and new techniques as different training regiments and training ideas come into play now, what's next? We've basically figured out all of these different training adoptions and all of these training techniques. However, the general community is still by far and large not really understanding a lot about how these work because these come out of labs like Microsoft and used in humongous clusters such as Facebook and uh, Meta. And so our next goal is to work on elevating the community so that they understand not only hey, I can run this and I know that it works on my 24090s, but also help you understand how does debugging work? How do I know that my throughput is fully optimized? How do I understand, okay, this is probably how much RAM I need to do this, but what if I increase my sequence length? Suddenly, how big of a GPU am I gonna need? And this goes far beyond using the trainer or using the accelerator, but it's a full understanding of when to use what tools. And so my future for Accelerate that I see is using it as a community resource of helping elevate everyone to take their jobs that they have running locally, scale them up to clusters to get full fine tunes going, to figure out, hey, this worked with Laura, now let's see what happens when I fully do it, uh, with the confidence of not only can you use this sort of magic little library that will somehow make everything work, but you have confidence in, I know how it's working, why it's working, and how to tell if something goes wrong. And so as a result, we're sort of nearing the point of a 1.0 release. It's been two and a half, three years in the making. And at this point, we have 7 million users per month, over 110 million downloads at this point. And so we're kind of at a point where everything is fairly stable. We're going to give it to you guys, let you guys run, test everything else really quick, do some small changes, and then we're basically ready to stabilize the API. 
it's been a very long journey that we didn't really expect to take off as much as it did before the LLM uh, sort of boom. And it's been super exciting to see how far it's come. So thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, I will happily take questions. And there are some resources here for you guys to learn more about Accelerate. Thank you so much. Any questions, or have I thoroughly confused everyone? <laughs> sure. Uh, I gave a presentation yesterday on uh, running AI workloads on AMD GPUs, so I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you some AMD questions. Sure. Have you tested Accelerate with RockM, or is there RockM support? There is RockM support. Uh, we're working on getting runners right now, but uh, it has been working, and the folks behind uh, the RockM compilers at uh, Intel have been working th uh, thoroughly with us on making sure that Accelerate can work as best as possible. So, yes, absolutely we do. <laughs> Any other questions? Let me get a little closer. Can't quite hear you. Say that again. Sorry. So, uh, in response to what you said about uh, uh, distilling the knowledge to uh, the community, do you have specific plans for that? Do you plan on having, I don't know, video tutorials, or do you have a sequence in mind? Sure, yeah. Uh, for those who couldn't hear, the question was basically, how is the democratization effort going to happen? How is the education going to happen for the community? Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with me, I did a lot of short-form courses. Uh, and so revamping the Accelerate course, again, is probably something I see in the future, as well as uh, we're looking at a configuration zoo. So that way you can go through and have a general resource of, I know how this training was done to train 70 billion parameters on a cluster of 10 nodes. Let's go take that and fully digest what's happening in it. Uh, and those are most of where I think the efforts are going to lie, because giving people the understanding of here's this confusing terminology that deep speed uses that fsdp uses and chunking it out and saying well it's actually not that scary you're just saying what parts of the model and what parts of training are going to what gpu will help boost everyone without needing to go through and dig through the pytorch documentation because that is always overwhelming so good question Yeah, we're going to make them all in the Accelerate repo. So Axolotl uh, kind of was the guiding light of this because they have like over 150 different configurations for training different models. It's kind of insane what they've been able to do. And so we're going to try our best to emulate that as much as possible and give you just in the repo itself as you're exploring the code, a model, a configuration zoo describing how do you do deep speed 03? How do you do 02? How do you figure out what that is and how it translates to fully sharded data parallelism? So, very good question. Any others? Perfect. Thank you guys so much for joining. <laughs>